Hey everybody, CJ here with Muxboard. And in our last video, we did an unboxing of this Mongoose module. And today we're gonna do another unboxing, but something different. And I think it's probably something that a lot of you guys are gonna recognize. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, this one, again, not quite as big of a box, but uh, doesn't fit on my bench very much, but I think uh, you guys can probably put together the, the pieces here and tell what I got, or at least where it's from. So let's go ahead and get it open, and we'll take a closer look. All right, here we go. We got a little Cobra system. Let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, one at a time and we will take a little bit of a closer look. Before we get started though, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the paperwork we got. Uh, I won't go into too much detail here, but it looks like I got a nice laminated universal quick guide. It's got some topics on batteries, powering on and sync, test continuity, test range and signal strength, arming modules being ready to fire, got a few error codes and battery recommendations, and then this is nice, maximum e-match and igniters. So that kind of gives you some information there. Okay, da -da 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 -da. again, just more information about some common questions it looks like. So, nice addition to have. Let's see what we got here. Dear Cobra customer, I got some, looks like a little letter from Scott Smith. Always dry run your scripts. Pre-show checklist for the 18R, 18R2. And okay, we got error codes and a reference sheet. This looks like it's, okay, script error codes. Interesting, lots of information here. This looks like something you'd want to hang on to, so. I don't really want to get into that too much. I'm not one on reading the, reading too many instructions, but uh, I'll definitely hang on to this in case I do run into problems. All right, let's get started on our first box, Cobra 18R2. Got our uh, antenna there. Uh, yep, reverse SMA connector. Same as what we saw on the mongoose. Get this thing out of that. Okay, all right. I think that's it. Wow, nice, uh, nice foam insert there. Right. Okay, so it looks like it comes with. Yeah, it's real. Sticky tape or something on there. Get rid of that. Ah, lanyard with these uh, silly keys. Great. Okay. Hopefully we don't lose them. Looks like we've got Cobra OTG cable harness. Ah, yes. This is going to be needed if you're using uh, Cobra control panel with uh, an Android tablet. So uh, I will not be doing that. Yeah, it looks like we got a yep, USB-C OTG adapter. And then we've got, that's an interesting one, USB-A to USB-A. And then a USB micro. Ah, okay, so we have two OTG adapters, whether you're gonna need micro USB or USB-C, and then an A to A adapter. Gotcha, okay, that makes sense. Let's go ahead and set that to the side since we're not gonna be using that. All right, so we got our 18R2, nice plastic case, custom enclosure here, got this uh, antenna cover, yep, 
Oh, I'm, I was mistaken. I'm sorry. I believe this is regular SMA, not reverse polarity SMA. So, put that back on. It's fairly lightweight. Unfortunately, ah, I forgot. I don't have any batteries. Uh, I don't forgot. This is not a lipo thing. That's an extra cost, and I did not spring for that. Um, got this chunky little protective cover here. I don't recognize, oh, is that Seahorse brand? USB bulkhead, maybe? Yeah, it's got a nice little gasket on it. I mean, it's a little bulky, but it's gonna get the job done. Uh, if I remember right, I haven't used Cobra a whole lot in the last few years, but this is gonna be like your status LEDs for your E-matches, changing your channels, turn it on and off, pretty basic stuff, pretty straightforward. I do like that uh, you can peer inside at all the electronics on these. But don't worry, you're not going to have to look through this case. Uh, future video, we're just going to take this thing apart. So, all right, let's get to the next box. This one's a little heavier. Cobra 72M with, uh, looks like it says Pro Adapt Plate. All right. Little car here, never leave charging batteries unattended good advice for uh, lipo batteries all right see what we got got our antenna again and guess what's in here more of these keys to lose or hopefully not okay so this is Cobra 72M. I decided to go, I, I'm, a, I'm a quick plug, quick connect fanatic, so had to get that. But um, I wanted the flexibility to be able to swap this out in case I need it for something else. So I went for the Pro Adapt plate. And I did order one additional one of those we'll take a look at here in a second. So, say, looks like it's also got a USB connector, not real sure what that's for. Maybe firmware upgrades? Maybe not. Don't know. Ugh. Got the same antenna with this little protective cover. Yep, much the same. Looks like our charging port is here. Uh, I did not see. Oh, yeah. It's not LiPo. No charging port. Let's see if we can turn it on. Cover firing systems. Yeah, this is this display is a lot different than what I remember on some of the older Cobra gear. You know, the old ones you pretty much had the uh, seven segment display only. So this looks like it's got some more information on it. It's like probably battery voltage, signal strength, uh, and DB bank channel and address. That's Cobra speak for for addresses and such. One uh, P, two P. I don't really remember what that's for. Battery voltages maybe. So yep, here we go. Yeah. When you're using 9 volts, it's 1P and 2P. 1P is for the command and control side of things, and 2P is for the firing voltage. So, but we'll talk about that more at some point. Uh, I don't want to go into too much depth here, just because this is an unboxing video. Um, but yeah, so not a whole lot. Oh yeah, looks like this does come with the external power input. So if you do want to fire with, um, you know, a battery with a little more oomph, whether it be voltage or current, probably voltage. Looks like you can go up to 24 volts. So that's going to be more than the battery voltage, looks like. I'm assuming battery voltage is sitting at 14.8. So, looks like our battery status is an LED down there. Hmm, interesting. Take a look at the back again. You can see all the, see inside there a little bit. It's pretty cool to see. And, wow, there is a large ceramic resistor in there. Interesting. I'll have to take a look and see what that's all about. Um, I am not familiar with these, I, but we're going to find out. We're going to learn a lot when we take this thing apart. So, let's see uh, how easy it is to get this Pro Adapt plate off. Nice little, yep, little captive thumb screw. It's pretty nice. Just pull off. Yeah, looks like it. Okay, great. Looks like this has got uh, oh, 
interesting. Oh, maybe anodized piece of aluminum. All right, we're gonna have to take a closer look at that. That's that's interesting. I'm starting to understand why these are so expensive um, now, but we'll save that for future video. Okay, here we go. This is very similar to what you would see on the case of an 18M. This this is not the is this the same case as an 18M? I don't know. I'd have to think about that, but. Something tells me it's awful similar, but clearly this interface here for the Pro Adapt plates is, is way different. So, interesting nonetheless. Um, while we got this out here, let's go ahead and pull over the Pro Adapt plate. Okay, so you can see here this is the uh, Pro Adapt plate. It's got 36S, or yeah, 36S bank, excuse me, 36 Centronics connectors on it uh, for their <clears throat> 36Q slats. Yep, pretty much the same. So we got a little plastic from the packaging stuck there. Yeah, these are very similar. Although this one looks like this one's anodized, this one's not. This one's just raw aluminum. Still milled out of a, looks like a nice chunk of aluminum. Interesting. Looks like these are press fit. Yeah, nice little piece of kit. Well, uh, like I said, we'll take a take a little bit closer look eventually. Let's see if we can get this on there. I guess these are almost like uh, alignment pins. It's it on. Well, I sure didn't feel it go on, but. Wow, yeah, there's just not a lot of pin exposed there, so yeah, there's not a lot to to feel, really. But good news is, if you don't have a good connection, when you're testing your slats or your e-matches, you'll find out. And I think these thumb screws are going to give you pretty good clamping force to hold that down. Just make sure you got to get them, get them snugged up. I do find it interesting that uh, this Pro Adapt plate there, how many, how many vias they have here on the top of this. Well, that's interesting, but nothing wrong with that. All right, so yeah, just like that, we've converted it over from Quick Connect E matches to slats. So, only other thing I got here, pretty sure this is just a charger. Yeah, pretty typical off the shelf let's see here 20 volt interesting 300 milliamp yeah there's nothing special about this this is pretty much a little commodity item a little wall dc wall wart always monitor your equipment while charging yeah they're big on that so all right well i hope you like seeing that unboxing um like i said we're going to take a much deeper dive uh in the future on all these firing systems i've got one more I need to unbox, I believe. And once we do that, then we can start taking a little bit deeper look. And uh, like I said, I'm looking for suggestions. What do you guys want to see? What kind of format do you want to see these videos in? If you have any uh, input or anything, feel free, leave a comment, let me know. And in the meantime, if you're looking for any custom slats or anything for your firing systems, uh, head over to muxboard.com and shoot me an email shop around a little bit see if there's anything we can hook you up with between now and uh, the next fourth of july all right you guys have a good one and we'll see you in the next video